Platforming games are a genre we're all familiar with. From classics like Super Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog, to more recent additions such as Little Big Planet and Shrine. There isn't a gamer out there who hasn't played at least one game in this humble genre. But there is one genre in gaming that has eluded the mainstream. And like a hipster's favorite band, you probably haven't heard of it. It is... The Roguelike. And while it's true roguelikes aren't too obscure these days, Many big titles out there are incorporating roguelike elements into their games. But you're never going to see a pure AAA roguelike out there for your new PlayStation 360s or Atari Jaguars. So I'm going to do y'all a solid and show you what that shit's all about. About, 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 about. To start, I've put in the man hours and have done extensive research in the most accurate and comprehensive resource for all things knowledge known to man. Wikipedia! And this treasure trove of ineffectible truths had this to say about roguelikes. The roguelike is a subgenre of role-playing video games characterized by level randomization, permanent death, and turn-based movement. Most roguelikes feature ASCII graphics, with newer games increasingly offering tile-based graphics. Games are typically dungeon crawls with many monsters, items, and environmental features. Computer roguelikes usually employ the majority of the keyboard to facilitate interaction with items in the environment. The name of the genre comes from the 1980 game Rogue. So let's check out some games that have come out in recent times to see what elements they're borrowing from this humble genre. All three of the Diablo games. All the Diablo games have randomized dungeons, enemy placements, and items. Diablo 2 and 3 also have a hardcore permadeath feature to give you that quintessential roguelike experience. The Binding of Isaac, ha! Huh? That one, that one is near and dear to my heart, I assure you. It's got random item placement, random levels, it's got permanent death, you know, uh... Pretty much the only thing that sets it apart is that real-time action. It, that, that's, that's enough roguelike for me. I mean, you know, those action, there was the action parts, you know, they, they ain't too roguelike, but you know, that's what sets it apart, and that, that, that's why I like it, okay? That's, that's why I like it! Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, it's got mysteriously randomized dungeons, and it's got a rogue staple that is, I go, you go, whenever you make a movement, the non-player characters and enemies will also make a movement. But damn it, my favorite genre blender is a platform roguelike hybrid called Spelunky. They say the best things in life are free, and they, whoever they are, will write. They will write, damn it! Because Spelunky is fucking free! Except the revamped Xbox Live version, but that sucks, so it doesn't count! So take Indiana Jones, have them have consensual sex with Mario, and then take their inevitably deformed offspring and tell him that if he dies, there ain't no coming back. And you get Spelunky. It's almost as beautiful as my description, and I assure you. Unfortunately, I don't have my copy of Splunky anymore because I pawned it to support my girlfriend's drug habit. But I do know a place down the street where we can get a copy. Come on, I'll show you. Hello, friends. We're in the cereal section at a local HEB grocery store in Austin, Texas. And if you remember from years back, they offered a free copy of Chex Quest in Chex cereal. Well. Nowadays, they're offering free copies of Spelunky in Shrek cereal, so let's see if we can find one. Let's go, shall we? Alright, so, we got granola cereal. Where, where's the checks? Where's the checks? There's Special K. There's Mini Wheats. There's, uh, oh, there's Rice Checks. See? Free Spelunky inside! <laughs> Look, all of them got Spelunky! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Rice Spelunky! So we have a box of rice checks here. The rice checks that has a copy of Spelunky inside. And we're gonna do a little unboxing for everyone. Because, uh, you know, it's rice checks. And rice checks, rice checks gives you the tools to be your own boss. So, uh, let's check it out, shall we? Spelunky? You see that? You see that? Look, look at this! Look at this! Look at that! Spelunky? By Derek Yu? Hell yeah! Oh yeah! Now the premise of the game is simple. Descend through randomized caves, grabbing all the treasure you can, and survive long enough to find the fabled city of El Dorado. Whatever the fuck it's called in this game, I, I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't give a shit. 
Anyways, it seems easy enough, but you're gonna get your dick smacked around more than a 40-year-old man in Thailand before you ever see the end of this game. It's brutal and relentless. No! Oh my- Oh! Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> fuck! Fuck! Alright, we got the idol. We just need to throw our rope up there- Oh! Oh my gosh! Ice is so slippery! Oh! But every time you die, it seems like a fresh chance to get things right, and you always feel like pressing onwards, taking what you've learned through previous playthroughs, and applying it just to get a little more progress than you got last time. So your character, which for the sake of this video will be called Junior, Don't call me Junior. Starts off armed only with a crappy whip not even a Belmont can make good use of. You also start out with some climbing rope and a few bombs, though there are several more items you can either find or purchase from shops. And if you're a huge dick, you can even steal from shops, but, but we'll talk about that later. So it's, it's standard platforming affair from the surface. Moving around, whipping shit, jumping on shit, buying shit, getting shit. Oh, oh my god, there's a boulder coming after me. <laughs> now the game is broken up into four zones with a few levels in each zone. And while that might not sound like much, it's going to keep you busy for a while, I promise. I promise you. Also, there's random boss monsters that you might not even see on a playthrough. Like this one, for example. So you're running around- Oh my god! It Dracula? Oh my god, oh, it's, it's Dracula. Oh, we gotta fight Dracula. So, so we're, we got the cape now. We got the cape. We got the cape. Oh, oh, hey, hey, hey there, baby. Hey, 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 baby. What, what do you, th what do you think of guys in cape? Uh, you like guys in capes? Oh, she likes guys in capes. You know, that's a dumb question. I think everyone, I think every girl likes guys in capes. You know what? We're, we're, we're gonna find out. Another roguelike staple this game has going for it is that fighting isn't always the best option. You're gonna have to use your environment to give you an advantage because unless you have powerful weaponry at your disposal, it's usually best to avoid conflict. Strewn throughout the caves, you'll also find effigies of the Hindu goddess Kali. You could sacrifice humans on her altar for a chance at some cool items. She doesn't always give them though. You, get, you gonna give me some? G g give me some now? How about now? Anyways, don't desecrate her altar because uh, she doesn't take that sacrilegious crap uh, too well. She'll, uh, she'll, uh, yeah. Hey baby, let me show you some of my moves. I, I, come on, I'm dancing. You like, you, you want to see me dance? Yeah. So we've beaten the first level. On to the second one. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. It, you got these uh, golem hands that you got to avoid, and uh, you know, it's just you know standard platforming. You can purchase items from Wilford Brimley too. Good morning. I'm Wilfred Brimley, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about my wares. So yeah, that's cool, buying shit and whatnot. I like buying shit, like, uh, like this cotton of milk. Uh, we, uh, it's almond milk, but, uh, we, we, we like milk around here. Just don't think about stealing, touching him inappropriately, or vandalizing his shop. Because if you do, his type 2 adult onset diabetes will get the best of him, and he'll bust out his double barrel shotgun and go Doom 2 on your ass. Come on, man, you don't want to hurt anybody. I'll kill you! Probably don't want to do this, because he'll be after you every single level from then on. Mm, a kiss, huh? Oh, was, uh, you know, it's prostitution, you know, this, this, this is illegal, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll buy. <laughs> oh, d I don't have any, I don't have any money, I don't have any, sorry. Sorry, I'm gonna just leave now, I'll leave. To make the experience a little more accessible, 
They've decided to apply a little astroglide to ease the harsh penetration you've been enduring thus far in the form of shortcuts. Between areas, Kanye West will ask you if you'd like to contribute money to a shortcut to the next area. So even if you don't feel like you can beat the game anytime soon, you can at least work towards getting enough money to create a shortcut. Yeah, it's a nice feature and I appreciate Kanye West taking the time out of eating fish sticks and praising Beyonce videos to do this for us. Now, I don't know too much more to say about this game. What you see is what you get. It's the randomization and permanent death that makes this game so much fun and replayable. You could play for hours and not even make it past the second zone, but you'll always want to keep playing. It never gets too frustrating, and it's a fresh experience every time you start a new game. I really don't have anything bad to say about this game, it's that good. And with a price tag of free, you can't really complain much. I give this game a thumbs up. Fuck it, two thumbs up. And so do you. I don't even know if you played it, but you know what? You're giving it a thumbs up, alright? You, you give this game a th You love it! You love it! You love it because I say you love it! Alright, I've been capturing this footage for a while, and this is the first time I've made it to the fourth zone, so I'm not, I'm not even going to cut this. Let, let, let's just watch. <sighs> I just can't beat it. But, that's okay. I think what makes roguelikes so appealing is the unique and personal experience that they offer to each player. The fact that every action counts causes you to stop and think, and when your hero finally does fall in battle, you reflect on the challenges you overcame and the narrow victories you achieved, taking in all that you have learned. And in this age of technologies with wikis and guides available at your fingertips, there's still that sense of wonder and mystery with roguelikes that takes you back to a simpler time, where you never knew what could happen, and every game was magical. And. If you're determined enough to make it to the end of a roguelike, the sense of accomplishment you'll feel is something games today just can't match in this age of quick saves and checkpoints. No, you earned it. And even though your drive and determination were pushed to the limits, you persevered. Long live the roguelike.